John chapter 8. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. So he leaves. Everybody went home to their house in 53. He goes off to the mountains. It's where he lives, where he stays. And early in the morning, so they go to their house in 53. And we're told Jesus goes to the Mount of Olives. That's his house. Early in the morning, he gets up. We find out he prays many of the nights. Early in the morning, he came again into the temple. Oh boy, he comes right back for trouble again. And all the people came unto him. Uh-oh, he's got the crowd. And he sat down and taught them. Oh, look at that. Sunday school lessons, Sunday, the teacher, he's sitting down teaching the people. And the scribes and Pharisees, uh-oh, brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Well, that's interesting because they're in the temple. What a place to bring a woman. You know what Malachi said these priests were doing with their wives? Cheating on them? And when they had set her in the midst, he's already got a crowd of people, so they gotta move these people out of the way, and there's Jesus thing. Boom, there she is. They're disrupting Jesus' class. That's disrespectful. At least wait for him to be done, and then you know, Jesus, come here. Come on, they want to make this whole thing show in front of all the people. Because the main motive of this thing right here is. We're going to have find Jesus at fault. We're going to kill him. we got all these people that are listening to him as witness. This is what we're going to do. Well laid plan. Discredit him. Discredit him before all the people. We got him. They say unto him, Master, uh, you don't mean it. It's just a title. It's also a rabbi. This woman was taken in adultery. In the very act. You know what that says? Read what that says. In the very act. It was a setup. It was an entrapment. Like a Daniel 6.10. Now Moses in the law commanded us. Leviticus 20.10. Deuteronomy 22.22. Numbers 5.11.17. Commanded us. That such should be stoned. Uh, the law said, you go back and check it, both the adulterer and the adulteress. Half law. But, what sayest thou? You know, that's what, man, what's your opinion? Write into our newspaper and we'll put your opinion. On our tell. we'll give you what our opinion is. We got talk show people of their opinions this they said tempting him before all the people that they might have an, they might have to accuse him John 1831 but Jesus stood stooped down and he was sitting so he would bend over a kind of stoop and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Listen that interesting. God now listen listen to me, listen to me from Moses. God didn't even give his priest the time. These are the priest's office, not the priest, but the priest's office that God ordained by Moses to Moses. Go set them up. And he, he bends over. Doo, 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 doo. What did he write? I know exactly what he wrote. Something on the ground with his finger. What does that tell you? Now Moses in the law commanded us. You got something wrong. Moses didn't command you nothing. It was told to us in the law that God with his finger wrote upon the stone. Moses just was a messenger, the carrier which broke the Ten Commandments. Who told you was God? Because it even said 
with God's finger those commandments were written. So here's God's finger writing on the ground. What did he write? I don't know. It doesn't say. Maybe he wrote the law. Maybe he didn't write the law. Maybe he's playing tic-tac-toe. I don't know. So when they continue asking him, they're getting annoyed now. How dare you ignore us? He lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Deuteronomy 17.7 all right she's a sinner i acknowledge she's a sinner but you without sin you know it's kind of funny too in this congregation who could throw the stone jesus could have he's the one without sin of all the people there listening to him of all the pharisees and priests that come up to him and this woman and Jesus himself, he's the only one who would throw in the stone. And yet he doesn't. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now, a note could be Deuteronomy 5.20. Could be names and dates. I don't know. I do know one thing where he wrote here in the temple. People walked over it later. Moses broke it. If the handwriting was on the wall of God's hand, it was ignored later, cleaned off, whatever. And they which heard we got to change that. Because Jesus didn't say nothing. Something he wrote on the ground spoke to them. I said something he wrote on the ground spoke to them the word written gave ear to their ears so we see the written word again being convicted by their own conscience well, at least they had a conscience Hebrews 4 12 and Leviticus 2010 they still had a conscience Nicodemus too had a conscience. Joseph Arvmia had a conscience. Paul, if he's here, had a conscience. Went out one by one, beginning with the elders. He had more skeletons in the closet. He had more sins. Man, he lived longer. Even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone. Well, he's without sin. <laughs> And the woman standing in the midst. All the people are here. That have been listening to Jesus. These priests, these Pharisees come up to Jesus to catch him at his word. To get him before the people. And they walk away. Now all the people, you know, they're blinking at Jesus. Okay, you got a, a adulteress. Now what are you going to do? What's the class illustration? And when Jesus had lifted up himself. So he's been bent over the whole time they leave. And saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are the where are those that are accusers? Hath no man con condemned thee? No priest can condemn you in anything. Get that. And don't you go running off in the closet. Don't you send children go and run off in the closet with the priest. When it comes down to those priests. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How dare they tell you that they can abolish your sin by giving you commands and prayers and all that, and they can't even get rid of their own? You ever ask your priest walking, say, you know, you know, they call him title, daddy. I'm going to say, the Bible says call no man. You ever ask him, well, who do you go when you when you confess your sins? Well, I go to the next idiot who don't know how to wear his shirt. Well, where's that guy go? Where does it stop? Because you're confessing one sinner to another sinner. Okay, the, the last guy who doesn't know how to wear his suit. What's he do with his sins? Oh, come on. You're playing a, a, a stupid childhood game. Ring around the rosy. What do I do with my sinsies? 
She said, No man, Lord. Ooh, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. There was no witness. He can't do nothing according to the law. What did the law say? He said he had to have two or three. Well, he had a whole bunch of people. They're gone. He eliminated the witnesses that he couldn't do nothing. And then turned around and showed her mercy and told her, go sin no more. So I have trouble. There's two, there's two type of people that can save. One to get saved, and when it comes to sins, he's upset. He's fighting. Yeah, he's got some sins he enjoys. They'll, they'll go later. But, you know, he's got the particular sins in his life. Man, he's fighting. He doesn't want to do it. He wants to stop. And he prays. And he, he listen, like when I had the cigarettes, man, I put them on the altar. I, I, I fought that thing. I didn't want to do it, but I did it, but I didn't want to do it. And there are people who, get, who say they get saved, and they go right back into sins. They have no, who cares? And they march, some of them march around and say, God loves us too. I don't think so. Jesus' command is, go and sin no more. There's no alibi. There's no loophole. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, so after this whole discord, what goes on, he turns back to the people. I am the light. I am. I am the light. John chapter 1. Reveals to us, scripture with scripture, what John 1 was. Who's the word? Well, who was the light? Jesus. Wasn't John the Baptist. A light is an examiner, eliminator. Colossians 2, 3. You know, if you got uh, like a toothache like I'm having right now, you get the flashlight and you say, honey, come here, can you look? It's dark in there. You need light. So you can see, oh, yeah, that's the dude. That's, oh, yeah, I see a little cavity here. Oh. You know, when you need light to see something. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. Interesting. But shall have the light of life. Where are we again here? We are talking about the physical and the spiritual. The physical light is boom. There's a light beam. The spiritual, the light of life. The spiritual, the water of life. Spiritual, the bread of life. Eight chapters of John. Do you realize you got yourself a candlelight -like dinner? You got the candlelight, you got the bread, and you got the water. How's that? And the Pharisees, therefore, said unto him, oh, some stuck around or they came back, something, but here's some Pharisees. Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. We've already went through this. John the Baptist was a record. The miracles are a record. The Father in heaven is a record, and the scripture is a, rec is a record. But they won't listen. They won't get it. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record myself, it's true. I'm telling you about me. Yet my record is true. For I know whence I came. Well, that's interesting. Where does man come from? Where did Jesus come from? He came from heaven. God. Where did man come from? Well, you walk on it. Dirt. <laughs> and you go back to dirt. For I know whence I came and whether I go. Oh, look at that. I'm going back to heaven. When I'm done with this thing, I'm going back to heaven. They don't know that. Let's look, okay, let's just take, for instance, these Pharisees. Let's say the group of them, let's say Nicodemus is here. Let's say Joseph of Arimathea is, is here. Let's say Saul's here. Okay, let's just say, for instance, three of those men don't have any idea they're going to heaven, really. Paul will later on, the surety of salvation. But these three men right now, they don't know. But Jesus knows where he, Jesus knows when he's going to die. He knows when he's going to be buried. He knows when he's going to go in the heart of the earth. And he knows when he's going to send back to the Father. 
He knows it. They don't. Especially in Old Testament salvation. Whether I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. They're blinded. They have no idea. They know who he is, but they don't know who he is. They believe in him, but they don't believe in him. Ye judge after the flesh. Physical. I judge no man. Oh, that's interesting. That's the first advent. When Jesus came as the lamb, he judges nobody. He's the judgment. He's, he's the wrath of God placed upon him. The lamb of God that was slain. Oh, but when he comes back as a second advent, he'll judge as a lion. So what did Solomon have on, on, the, on the steps of his, that led up to his throne? He had lions. You don't get to the throne until you get through the lions. You pass those lions. Then you get to the throne of God. Lion. Yet, if I judge, if I judge, Jesus speaking, if I judge, my judgment is true. You know an earthly you know an earthly judge, I mean, all sincere, honestly, he can make a mistake. He could have people in his courtroom lie and he I'm talking about a good judge, honest judge, tries to do right, loves the Lord, saved, prays. He still can do wrong. He doesn't know. If I judge, my judgment is true, for I am. Oh, no, I You judge after flesh, I judge. And yet, if my, if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone. But I and the Father that sent me. Oh, oh. God and Jesus, companions, together. Run that with Titus 2.13. God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. They try to rework that and there. It is also written in your law. John's a testimony. The miracles are a testimony. God the Father is a testimony. Here's God the Father. Now here comes the scripture. That the testimony of two men is true. Deuteronomy 17, 6 and 1950. That didn't work with the adulterous woman. You left. It is written, you Lord, the testimony of two men is true. Well, if he just said God, Jesus is a man. You got John. He's recapping what he said earlier. You got your witness. You also got Nicodemus there who already spoke earlier. To them. Remember? How can you be Nicodemus and just watching this and just not scream out? You guys are morons and go up and stand by Jesus' side. I am one that bears witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. We've already discussed that in John. God will testify. How did he testify? Ready? For God so loved the world that he gave his own. There's the testification. He goes before John the Baptist. This is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. He stands before uh, Peter and John and James. The, again, the voice from heaven. He stands to the testimony of the people. Guess what? There is no body in that tomb. He is risen. That's the testimony of God. Then said they unto him, Where is thy capital F father? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? What the Holy Spirit did there? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me, nor my Father. He's talking to the Pharisees, the stricter, strict sects of all the sects. Go ask Paul. You don't know God. And if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Go ask Paul what that means later on, by the by the end of book uh, the book of Acts. 
He will tell you, I know the Father because I now know the Son. Right now, he can't say that. I'm saying if Paul's there, I don't know if he's there or not. He's a Pharisee. He just told these priests. He just told these Pharisees, the religious people. Get it, the religious people. The religious people. The ones that are behind the altars, that are behind the pulpits, whatever they speak, the podium, whatever it is, behind their microphone. You don't know God. What would Jesus do? He stands you out right before the crowd and name you who you are. Knowing Jesus is knowing God. Seeing Jesus is seeing God. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. If you had known me, you should, you should have known my father also. These words spanked Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. So we're in the temple still. And no man laid hands on him. Oh, well, they wanted to, for his hour was not yet come. Remember, remember the last chapter? They, they, they want him dead. They've already sent the, the, uh, the sheriffs out to him, the troops, like they did in the garden, but his time's not yet. You realize, Christian, if we're supposed to be like Christ, and if God's in charge of your soul, fear him that is not, you know, to kill the body on that, but fear him that's able to, to kill your body and destroy your soul. You realize, if God is not finished with you yet, nobody can do anything to you as far as death. You die by the permission of God. Now, all they that live God in Christ Jesus are suffer person. You may suffer. You may be tortured. But they ain't going to kill you until God says, all right, come home. How's that for a little testimony? The longer you live, the longer you live for, for Jesus, the longer you tick them off, you are making God happy and you're ticking them off. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way. Ye shall seek me and shall die in your sins. That's why a man goes to hell. Because it's not under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Your sins are not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. You die in your sins. You have not had a rebirth. You die in your sins. You go to hell. Now, after you get reborn, after you, 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 are, you are adopted into God's family by the Holy Spirit, by the gospel that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, you sin after that and it's unconfessed, you lose rewards. You don't lose your soul. But he's talking to people who's never had anything clean. And I don't care how many lambs or cattle you brought to that altar you will die in your sins they are going to die with the sin of murder on their charge of god's son never mind this is a regular human there was no absolutely no blood atonement in the old testament for a murderer so what do you do with paul he's washed in the blood of jesus christ how's that one and dies and goes to heaven. Read his testimony, 2 Timothy 4. No Old Testament salvation could make Paul ever say that. So he had to have a new salvation. And whether I go, you cannot come. Oh. So there's a difference of places where a man dies in his sins and a man that doesn't die in his sins. There's two different places. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Now, rabbis taught that suicide, the work of it was the worst health treatment you could get if you committed suicide. Problem is, Samson committed suicide, and he's mentioned the heroes of faith, chapter 11 of Hebrews. For a rabbi committing suicide, you got the torturers of hell. Never mind deceiving all the people. That's 
That's their job. And I bet you some of those people committed suicide because of what these guys were doing to them. That would be one of the causes. Then it said the Jews, will he kill himself? But he, but he said, whether I go, you cannot come. Heaven, to the Father. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath, dirt. I am from above, heaven. See the physical and the spiritual again? Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. That's a verily, verily. For if ye believe not that I am he, I am he. Watch this. He said unto them that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You have to have belief. In Jesus Christ to be saved according to the Gospel of John no baptism no attendance you have to believe that I am he you know he just said to the Jewish people that I am he I am God I am Yahweh I am Jehovah you got to believe that Jehovah witnesses will have a problem with that verse then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true. God, I speak, not, I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him, God. The mouth of Jesus spoke God men wrote the Bible yeah from God's mouth verbal inspiration Jesus said that God spoke through his lips even I can't say that all the time all the time there are times I do speak of God inspiration through his word but not all the time they understood not that he spanked to them of the father look at that non-inspired words they didn't get that then said Jesus unto them when you have lifted up the son of man crucifixion not stoning put the rocks away boys but get the nails out now he's going to tell them of his death and burial and resurrection was it a mystery that Jesus was going to die and be buried and rose again absolutely not he tells his disciples over and over and over. He's telling the Pharisees over and over. He's telling the people. For when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He. Matthew 27:54. One of the centurions that stood by said, Whoa, this man, I forget exactly what it says. I'm not going further to honor the scriptures. Only problem he was, I think he had a past tense clause. He was, but he is. He shall know I am he that I do nothing of myself. What's that nothing of myself? The resurrection. Explain it. But as my father has taught me, I speak these things. I'm going to die. You're going to lift me up. Prophecy. My father is going to raise me from the grave. And I've taught you the scriptures. And he that sent me is with me. Total unity of, the, of God the Father, God the Son. Even on earth in a human body. Though Jesus is in a human body, there was no separation between God and him, except for on the cross. Because Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Has God ever fallen asleep? Absolutely yes. Remember Job said something, oh, do you have eyes like a man? Do you have the feelings that a man has? Job, 
your statement was made true by Jesus Christ? The answer is no, yes. You ever you ever visit a funeral, God? I mean, physically. Physically visit a f funeral. Yes, yes. A couple times. We read the other day, Jesus, are you going are you going to take anybody of your family and cast them into hell? We read the other day. Yes. Well, Jesus never felt the pain I have. Really? And when's the last time you spent hours awake praying for people who hated you? What will your last words be? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I don't know if that'd be my last words. He has sent me, is with me, and the Father has not left me alone. I do always those things which please him. Oh, I wish I could say that. I can't. As he spanked these words, many believed on Look at that. The words being spanked and believing. The words being spanked and believing. The words being spoke and believing. I just said a prayer. Well, who showed you? Oh, I just said a prayer. Then said Jesus to, to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word. You got it? You get saved by the word and he tells you to continue in the word. Then are ye my disciples indeed. The next class of being above being saved you're saved fine you know the next step being a disciple how do you be a disciple you stay in the word and division among people who don't want to do it and division among people who don't love the lord it's a hard step being a disciple is a very thing that you need to think about in your life are you willing to take the sacrifice. Family, friends, work. Don't say you're serving God and you're not in the Word. Continue my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Don't tell me if you're not in the Word of God, you know the truth. Just because you lay your hand on the Bible and say for the truth, nothing. If you haven't read the Bible, you haven't studied the Bible, you know no truth. And he's talking to people who have believed on him through the word. There's ability for you to know the truth by the word. And the truth shall make you free. Then answer him. Excuse me. They answer him. We be Abraham's seed. We're born of a particular family. Now this is this is another form of salvation. Look who we're born of. We've got blue blood. We got brown blood. We got we got the blood of all blood. The Mormons do that to trace your ancestry. And we never are in bondage to any. You're in bondage to the Roman government. You were in bondage to Babylon. You were in bondage to Cyrus. You were in bondage to Egypt. What are you are talking about? You are in bondage of your flesh. One of your priests was in bondage to an adulterous woman that was caught in the act. You're in bondage of Satan trying to get rid of Jesus. What do you mean you're not you're, you're not in bondage? How sayest thou ye shall ye shall be made free? He wasn't talking to you. Let's read it again. Then Jesus said unto those Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my word, then you shall be my disciples indeed. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He wasn't talking to you. Shut up. Stop butting other people's business. That message was not for you.
Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, important, important, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. You got a sin that, that troubles your life? You are a servant to that sin. Oh, I need it. Oh, I need it. I got to have it. Oh, when can I get it? Oh, when, oh uh, come on, Mr. Cashier, man. Come on, ring. I got to have it. You're serving that sin. Oh, which they hurt so I get out of this place and I go out and do what I'm doing, whatever it is. The servant abideth not in the house forever. You're going to die. But the son abideth forever and ever and ever. The son's eternal. We are not. And if you're, listen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. You know, even though your soul lives in hell, the Bible takes it, you're dead. If God takes the very fact that souls are in hell, you're dead. Even though they're in torments and burning and, and tragedy, God looks down and says, you're dead. You're just dead. There is no life in you, but there is life. Imagine being in a place like hell in a lake of fire in the eyes of God to you. Oh, well. You deserved it. I sent you many people. I sent you the word. You're dead. That happens today. A lot of, a lot of children by their parents, especially Jews who believe on Jesus Christ, you're dead. Your parents may have a fortune. Your father and mother may have a fortune. But in their eyes, if you're dead, they don't have anything to do with you. Don't come knocking at the door. Jesus has the life. Jesus holds the life. Jesus is eternal. You want eternal life? Don't go to Mary. Don't go to religion. Don't go to self. Don't reject God. Because <laughs> when you reject God, you're rejecting an atheist is rejecting Jesus Christ. If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Look, he answers them. And a particular note is quite interesting. The word father shows up 21 times in chapter 8. It's all about God and it's all about Jesus. Now watch this. Watch what's going to happen to great white throne judgment. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. <laughs> He's going to acknowledge who they are. I knew you grew up as this religion. Still, you're condemned. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. I know you're Jews. But ye seek to kill me. We just read that in the previous chapter. Remember they said, you're, you're a devil. Who seeks to kill you? And a bunch of people are going, hey, isn't that the one you wanted to kill? <clears throat> oh, man, why would you say that? Go send the troops to go get him so we can take him in private and kill him. You seek to kill me. Because my word has no place in you. My word has no place in you. If you ain't got the word in you, you're not saved. You're damned. You're not free. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. No word. You have no salvation. You know why tracks are great? Because they got the word. Tracks don't work. Go ask that Ethiopian. You think he was carrying around Isaiah in his pocket? I don't know how what he had. Maybe he did have him. I don't know. Maybe he had, but he had to have the word because he quoted Isaiah 53. I'm going to tell you something. The word wasn't there the day you claimed to be saved. You did not get saved. We've seen over and over. I want to stress this, guys. I dealt with people in prison. Oh, I just said this prayer. I had one guy tell me his pastor prayed for him. Now he's saved. I had another guy tell me this church in their, their soup kitchen, the, the nun prays for him. That's his salvation. I've heard all the things. And you got to look at him and you, you, you cry because that's not the salvation. And they've been fooled. And those are the people who are going to cry, Lord, didn't we? I never knew you. And it ought to hurt your heart if you're a soul winner. You ought to want to go up to these people and punch them dead in the face and say, Lord, can I throw them in hell personally? 
But that job's reserved for the angels, as far as I read. You have, I'm going to stretch it. you got to stretch it. you got to add the word. We know a guy that goes down the street for you with it. He carries no book. He just says stuff. What are you going to do if somebody comes up to you? What do I need to do? How do I need to do what you're saying? You better have the word. You better have a Bible. You better have a Bible in your car. You better have a Bible at the workplace. I don't yet. I'm not allowed to have books. But I got gospel tracks. I speak that which I have seen with my father. Ooh. Jesus is an eyewitness to heaven. And ye do that which ye have seen with your small f father. I do God the father. You do small f your father. We're going to see in a minute who their father is. Then answer and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Will father Abraham get you into heaven? He's down there in Abraham's bosom right now comforting the saints. Talking to people in hell. There's a lot of religions that has a human name there. Put, put the human name is our father. One big guy sits in Rome. Holy father. Wrong. They turn around and say we believe in God. Jesus said to them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Now, physically, physically, aren't they Abraham's children? Spiritually, are they? We're back to physical and spiritual. And that travels throughout John. But now ye seek to kill me. A man that has told you the truth which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. What did Abraham not do? He didn't try to kill God. When Abraham heard God, the Bible says it was counted to him for righteous because he believed God's what? Word. Got it again. Ye do the deeds of your father, small l. Then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. Your father slept with your mother before you got married. So you see, even though it said that Joseph and Mary were husband and wife, there was still a legal pretense there that didn't make him really husband and wife yet. Fornication. We have the big F father, even God. Wait a minute. You said Abraham was your father. You don't even know what you're saying. And again, we had another guy one time. We're talking to his soul. Well, I go to this church and I just asked, well, where's this church? I don't know. Wow. You go to the church and you don't know where it is. Jesus said unto him, if. God were your father, ye would love me. Jehovah Witnesses, they don't love God because they don't love Jesus, honor him as God. Their title is a lie. Ye would love me, for I proceed forth and came from God neither came I of myself but he sent me and that's where those throw you know see he came from God he's not God but he is he was sent by God who is God explain it I can Jesus tells me earthly things Nicodemus and I don't even understand them things I don't have full knowledge of the 66 books of the Bible when I master the 66 books of the Bible, then I can tell you about the Trinity and the God and the Son relationship. But until then, I can't. 
Why do you not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Some people are not going to hear you preach or show them the Bible in the way of salvation because they're not of God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. And sometimes Satan has blinded them. In 1 Corinthians 4.4 4 or 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Now watch this. You, you want a knife in the, in the back? Ye are of your father the devil. Ooh. And the lust sin of your father ye will do. Wasn't there a woman taking adultery? By, oh, that's a lust. He was a murderer. He's been keep telling him, you want to kill me? Who really wanted Jesus dead? Satan. Satan. Who's he going to call to do it? His children. <laughs> he was a murderer from the beginning. Abel. And truly the spiritual part of Adam and Eve, because they didn't die later, right? There's that physical spiritual again. Physically they died, but later on. Spiritually, they died in the eyes of God. Here we go. Physical and spiritual again. He was a murderer from the beginning and bold not in the truth. He just told him, if you believe my words, you shall be free indeed. Oh, how can we be free? You're not. You're in Satan. Those people that believe my word are in the Father, and in the Father is truth. And bold not in the truth because there is no there is no truth in him. I like the good time for the November date that's coming up. When he speaketh a lie, when Satan lies to you, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar. Now watch this. I want to get this one down now. And the father of it. Satan fathers lies. So I'm going to point this out. When you go in your church and you have a skit or a play. And you proclaim yourself to be Jesus. You proclaim to be John the Baptist. You pretend to be Rachel. You pretend to be another name that's not your name. Another occupation that's not your occupation. Are you not lying? That lie did not come from God the Father. It came from Father Satan. How dare you bring that into a church house? Satan's not allowed in this church yet, but you bring lies into it. You bring gossip into a church. You lie about people. There's Satan. And when you tell stories that are not true, that's a lie. You brought in Satan. Oh, there must be white lies, little lies, and kangaroo lies, I guess. You see, Easter bunnies and Santa Claus is a great lie, but little pastoral stories, you know, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Never will be okay. Satan is the liar. God is the truth. God couldn't lie if he wanted to. He cannot lie. He's not able to lie, the Bible says, and will never lie. What are you doing lying, Christian? When you lie, you are taken after the father, Satan. God is supposed to be your father. Why do you keep on going back to your old house? God has adopted you. You slap God in the face and go run back to your other father when you lie. You need to know that. Plenty of lies out there today. And, I, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Jesus never lied. He spoke the truth and they don't believe it. I've witnessed that many times. I speak the truth, they don't believe it. Which of you convinces me of sin? Can. Now, didn't we just have this conversation earlier in this chapter? He without sin throw cast the first stone? All right, come on. Let's lay the adulterous woman aside now. How about me? How about me? You're going to cast a stone at me? You're going to stone me? That's what he's saying. You want me dead. You're going to stone me? What's my sin? What is my sin? 
You couldn't even bring the adulterer with adulteress. What are you going to charge me with? Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? Satan. He is blinded. 4-4, 1 4, Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. I forget. <clears throat> I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Somebody who will not hear the word of God is not of God. Uh, you got people who profess to be saved and won't hear a man preach the Bible and say, Jesus wouldn't do that, I would never do that, you're wrong, you're turning people away. Mm-hmm. Yep. I wonder what condition you are in. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan? Ooh, one of those wicked, awful people. Ew. Oh yeah, they got some of them got saved. Some of them listened to Jesus. Some of them got right. So you know what that Samaritan is? Later on, they say, they say in the book of Acts, they call them Christians, which is really an insult name, which I'm glad to have it. This name is an early version of Christian. <laughs> You're one of them Samaritans. And has a devil again. Man, they think Jesus is devil possessed. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father and do this and ye do dishonor me i give god the honor you don't give it to me through i seek not my own glory there is one that seeketh and judges very very i say on i say unto you if a man keep my sayings he shall never see death keep his what keep his word it's important got to be important that's why i stress it then said the jews unto him now we know that thou art a devil abraham is dead and the prophets are dead you know this would say thou say it. if a man keep my sayings he shall never taste dead two things three things they're a liar they just said abraham and the prophets the prophets who they killed they just testified that those prophets they killed kept the word of God. Look at that. They just hung themselves as murderers. That's a great testimony. Thank you. Abraham, they testified. He kept his word, but you guys don't. Now, he shall never taste death. death. Read 51 again. If a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. You're still going to die. You're going to taste death. There's a big difference between tasting and seeing. I'm going to die one day. This body will die if the Lord tarries. But I am absent from the body and present with the Lord. You guys are going to see me dead. But brother, I'm going to open my eyes to God. Art thou greater than our father Abraham? Oh, there he goes. Abraham God again. Which is dead. And the prophets are dead. Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. That's pride. If I say, Oh, look at me. Look at uh, Shut up. You're no good. It is my Father that honoreth me. Of whom ye say that he is your God. That God you worship is the God, and he worships me, and he honors me. I am him. Yet ye have not known him, God. But I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. Whoa, Jesus. If I ever say I don't know the Father and the Father don't know me, I'm a liar. You guys are a liar by saying you know him and he don't know you. Ooh. This is getting, and can you just see the people just sitting there watching this going back and forth? And Jesus is winning the conversation. 
I guarantee Jesus is keeping a calm, cool posture while the Pharisees are probably yelling and screaming. I shall be a liar like unto you. Oh, man, this is before the people. This is the congregation that sits under these guys. And he just he keeps calling them liars, liars, liars. Today in America, they would sue you for slander. For slander even though it's true. And find a judge that will honor in their case. But I know him and keep his sayings. He calls them a liar. Oh boy, here he goes. You ready? For, you ready for the final one in this chapter? The final. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. This is Genesis 22, with his son Isaac. Abraham's been looking for the day for the Messiah to come. God shall provide Himself a lamb. This is what Abraham's been waiting for. Me, here I am. Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad through Genesis 22. He saw Jesus and Isaac climb that hill and about to sacrifice himself. He saw the ram taking the place of his son, letting Barabbas go. So Isaac is also a type of Barabbas. Barabbas and Isaac got to go home. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Can we end this chapter for certain religions? Can we close this chapter? I always wonder what, maybe what they say in other Bible. But no, let's read what the Bible says. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you before Abraham was I am the pre-existence of Jesus Christ before Moses said what's your name God before God told Moses I am that I am I am to Abraham, the foundation of who you guys are. Now, did Jesus ever say he was God? Watch. Watch the reply of the Jews. Then took they up stones to cast at him. Well, let's go back real quick. Let's go back. Was it chapter 5, was it? Let's, let's forget the first charge. Let's look at 518. Forget the Sabbath. But said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. These Jews knew exactly what Jesus said. And you know what these rebellious Jews would stand up to Jehovah Witness and say? He said he was God. Okay? You guys are liars. You're worse than we are. You're not even Jews. We're Jews. We're of these Jews who are of Abraham will go up to the Jehovah Witnesses and call them true liars. I've seen some of the people that come out of the gate here at, uh, at Daytona Beach. Many of them are not Abraham's seed or Jewish. I can tell you quite, I'm not going to get into it, but they're definitely not Jewish. Okay? They've been in the sun too long. They took. Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of all the people of them, and so passed by. That last verse there, I am, that's Yahweh. That is God the Father, Jehovah. The Jews knew exactly what he said. Too bad people today don't. 